What's up, Kings fans? Welcome back to another episode of Trade and Jabs. My guest this week is former NHLer and current analyst for TSN, Jeff O'Neill. O-Dog, thanks for joining the show. Trade and Jabs, I love it. It's good to be here, Jack. Good to be here, bud. How are things? Uh, I'm great. I'm great, and uh, especially great with uh, having you on right now. Um, you know, we've got seven games left in the season, and the, the Pacific Division standings at the top are, are quite tight. Um, but we'll get to that in just one second here. I kind of wanted to start with uh, the Kings season as a whole. And, you know, for many people's eyes, the Kings have, you know, exceeded expectations. For you, you know, what were your expectations of the Kings going into the season? And frankly, how have you seen it play out this year for them? Well, I think what you're seeing is the the Kings version of kind of retooling and re, reinventing themselves as opposed to some organizations where they, they have some success and they get to a point and they say to themselves, we need to get rid of all of our players and start fresh. And they kind of did a retool, which is keeping quality guys, some of the best players in the league like Drew Doughty, Kopitar, uh, Quick and Net. And then they had to kind of draft, develop and um, also sign like they just they used all of their um, assets basically or their all their means to kind of retool this thing and have a new look and this is the it's coming to fruition now and even down the line you got young kids like Quentin Byfield you bring in Deno who's such a quality player and if you stack up Andre Kopitar and Deno back to back that's pretty tough for any opposition to deal with so uh, I think you're seeing the fruits of the labor as the organization said we're not just getting rid of all of these guys because that's tough to do. And then we're really kind of starting from scratch. So it's a retooling. And I, I, I think you're seeing the, the back end of it where they're saying, you know, we have another chance to possibly make a run here if we get some goaltending and we have these young guys play well and contribute. And our older veterans, like the players I just mentioned, they kind of return to that leadership form. Then they could be dangerous. There's no doubt. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Philippe Deneau, and he's someone that, you know, you saw quite a bit of last year uh, up in Canada with the All-Canadian Division. More and than obviously... I wanted to, Jack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and obviously his run to the Stanley Cup with, uh, with Montreal. Uh, you know, you've seen the additions that Rob Blake has made, uh, specifically in terms of what Philippe Deneau has brought to the Los Angeles Kings. What have you made of the impact he's had on the team as a whole in a Kings uniform? I mean, you look at the big thing with him was, I mean, man, you're paying a lot of money for a guy that um, maybe is not going to be in the top 25 in points. But at the end of the day, he's such a solid competitor and has such much like Kopitar. I don't know he's obviously not as skilled as Kopitar, but just the understanding and knowledge of the game, how to play a two way game how to be really difficult on your opponent. He can also, I think he doesn't get enough credit for his offense. Does he have 20 goals? I think he's got 20 goals right now, doesn't yep. he? Yep, career high so 21, yep. It's just, when, when you bring the knowledge and the style, and it's like I mentioned earlier, you throw out Kopitar, then you're going back with Dano. Guys that just have an understanding, the face-off prowess, the ability of playing all zones of the ice, it just does so much for your team, killing penalties, taking face-offs, it's like, you know, some players are one dimensional where they can shoot and score goals and it's like great. But when you think about putting that player on the ice for 25 minutes a night and how many different things he can do to impact the game at the center ice position, there's just so much value in that. You played in the NHL for 11 years and you, you know, led your team in scoring, I believe, two years with Carolina. Uh, from a, an offensive perspective, you go up against a Kings team and you see a lineup with Kopitar and Deneau with two guys that are both, you know, Selkie-esque type of players. What does that do for you in terms of game planning, knowing how difficult it could be with the defensive prowess of two guys like that? What it tells you is, I mean, if you're if you're smart and you're reading the situation is you're going to have to work for every inch of ice you're not going to get that slam dunk for the most part you're not going to get that slam dunk offensive play where there's completely blown coverage and you're like oh my god my guy's in the corner and i'm in front of the net and he's totally forgotten about me because you can get that sometimes you get a young kid or a guy that's just sleeping out there so you just have to understand you know against quality players like that it's like on the power play where they might not be out there and you got a man advantage that's where you can make your hay 
because you know five on five they're not going to make silly mistakes and give you a freebie so everything's got to be earned and there might be the odd situation where you can't beat a player beat Kopitar beat the note of the net it just doesn't happen often you really got to capitalize on any kind of opportunities you get well in terms of capitalizing there's you know seven games left in the Kings season uh, if we get to that Pacific Division picture, you know, you've got three teams separated by about two games. And it, it looks like, you know, between Edmonton, Vegas and uh, the L.A. Kings, likely two are going to end up uh, in the playoffs. Uh, how would you assess the way the three teams are playing uh, and what we look forward to, given that uh, we're right here at the end of the season and two, with, uh, two of those guys get in? It's, it's so tough. There's, I, I find there's so much parity. It's like the teams that are getting in, like there's so many quality teams that are going to be thought they were maybe Stanley Cup contenders that are just not going to make the playoffs this year. So um, as a general manager, you might have had big promises, Jack, going into the season saying we're definitely a playoff team. You look at a team like Vegas, the success they've had since their inception into the league. They went to the Stanley Cup finals and, you know, they signed Petrangelo. They, they signed Jack Eichel. And I'm sure everyone was thinking, okay, maybe this is our year now and they might not make the playoffs. So I think there's so much parity. And if you look at every team, with the salary cap, they all kind of have their strengths, which might be their star offensive players. And then they all have weaknesses, might be a couple D men here or there or goaltending. And it's just going to be whatever team can get in, get on the right page. But the one thing I like about the LA Kings is they have the knowledge and the history and kind of that winning kind of pedigree where it's like okay guys remember back then remember back in the day we can do this and we know what it takes so when you when you kind of send that message throughout the team where it's like just follow us and we can lead the way that's a great thing for a team to have yeah no question it's going to be interesting you know just a, a brief dive into it you know Edmonton with eight games uh, left has five playoff opponents the Kings with seven games left just one playoff opponent. Uh, Some kind then, of Edmonton LA series would be a lot of fun, I think. They're just the old, even though it's Gretzky years ago, the Edmonton LA connection. I just find that always a fascinating matchup. Yeah, we've we've seen two games in the last week or two with yeah. uh, with Edmonton and uh, and the Kings, and it's been quite fascinating in terms of the matchup with Connor McDavid and and Leon Draisaitl. From a hockey mind like yours, what is the best way to defend a team that has two guys that, you know, average over a point and change per game? All you got to do, Jack, is do two things. You can get two two discs, and one is the playoffs from last year with the Winnipeg Jets shutting them down, and the year before that in the bubble, the Chicago Blackhawks shut them down. It's just like... That's the biggest thing with the Edmonton Oilers. It's like when the, those two are on the ice, it seems like the best player, the best team in the world. And when they leave the ice, it doesn't see, really seem like that. They got quality players, but it's exactly. always been kind of the talk where you shut down Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, you're going to have a chance to beat the Edmonton Oilers. Same as here in Toronto. You shut down Marner Matthews, probably got a good chance to win. So. Um, you just go through the video of those two series and see what they did and make life really difficult on those guys because you give them any time and space. That's the big switch in the playoffs. The NHL, more than any other sport come playoff time, the game really changes a lot. It's really hard, really hard to get places and get quality opportunities and the teams that fight through and have that skill and the will, that's who succeeds. The last thing I wanted to touch on is a little bit of the Kings youth. You know, we've seen it come up in the NHL this year, a little earlier than expected with all the injuries in Los Angeles. Um, but one man in particular would be Quentin Byfield. You know, Sudbury, Ontario guy. Obviously, you're an Ontario guy yourself. You know, what have you made of what we expected in Quentin Byfield when we drafted him? Um, or at least what the experts talked about and, and what you've seen in a guy like Quentin Byfield uh, in the early years of his career, you know, 35 games on the season, uh, mm -hmm. eight points and, and, you know, showing some life, uh, but a young guy as well that is obviously working on consistency. Yeah, I think so. And obviously when you talk about a draft pick that high, Jack, you're thinking step right in, rookie of the year, immediate impact, but everybody gets gets in the league and develops at a different level and I give the Kings credit for showing patience and saying okay you're not ready for this you're not ready for that but at some point 
he has to take the next step and he has all the resources there in Los Angeles, whether it be Rob Blake or anybody in the organization. I know Nelson Emerson helps a lot and you've got resources within your own locker room. Uh, be a sponge with Andre Kopitar. Go see what he does in the summer. Find out how the best centermen train. Go out to Arizona and spend a week with Austin Matthews in the summer. Figure out what he does to shoot the puck. The resources are... I mean, I, I, I only say this stuff because I, I wish back in the day I did stuff like that where it's yeah. like I had Gary Roberts in my back pocket and I could I trained with him and got to learn from him. But there, if you want to be the best and you want to be great and you can take the next step, it's all... I mean, I'm not trying to sound like some motivational speaker, but it's like all right in front of you. If you want to exhaust the resources, you can do it. You can you can figure out a lot of stuff and work. People are always happy to help. I mean, you call up different athletes and how do you how do you get good at this? And how are you how do you shoot the puck like you do? What do you do to help you shoot the puck? So he's they're being patient. But I think with Quentin Byfield, sooner or later, you got to be saying you, you got to take a next step here and be a contributing factor and a real solid guy in our lineup because we can only kind of coax you along for so long. Yeah, well, well no question, uh, you know, your advice, I think, is extremely valuable for a guy like Quentin Byfield, but anyone who wants to improve in the game from youth hockey all the way up. Uh, and for QB, I yeah, agreed. It's, you know, a matter of time, but for someone who has got, you know, 40 games in the NHL, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Jeff O'Neill, thanks so much for joining Trade and Jabs. Thanks for having me, bud. We'll talk soon. Sounds great.